Father Simon of the Forgiving Faithful says, Mr T, my story begins several years ago in London. This was a time before marriage, before children, and in the early courting days of my now wife, a spontaneous trip to the capital for a romantic weekend was in order, back in a time when we could stay in hotels that weren't purple. Oh, yes. Do you remember those days? Oh, <laughs> so good. In my rush to whisk... I like... Obviously, there's a lot to be said of purple hotels. Yes. In my rush to whisk my beloved away, I didn't realise that the London Marathon was taking place that weekend. Now, I expected this once I found out to be a disaster, making commuting around town problematic. And all in all, a pretty boring experience. I was fairly naive back then. We inevitably got caught up in the marathon on the Sunday morning. We stood for a few minutes watching the elite runners pass down Birdcage Walk. Minutes turned into hours and we actually thoroughly enjoyed clapping and cheering on the runners, high-fiving the odd few, obviously not Steve Cram, sadly. <laughs> and we quickly decided that it had been a brilliant, brilliant experience. As indeed will a lot of people who've watched a marathon go past because they're great fun to watch. This, I have to say, Father Simon, lit a fire somewhere within me and a few short years later married and with the first of two girls in tow i applied and got a place in the london marathon i was petrified i had never run in a race before but there was an experienced runner in the family my wife's uncle ron it was during a christmas gathering that i told wise uncle ron about me running the marathon he gave me three pieces of excellent advice let me just well, have you done a half marathon no no well, what's the 10k's, 10k's, 10K's is all, all right well, yeah. let's check out this advice against your 10k knowledge yes so uncle ron says one start slow and get slower <laughs> two run in a local race as a warm-up to give you a feel for it very good and three take on board some of some of the running gels that they hand out as it really helps when feeling fatigued these, yes. are the, these are the any, energy gels uh -huh. which, are, which are handed out. That you eat. Yes, that's right, yeah. and uh, puts glucose into the bloodstream. And so I took the advice on board and signed up for a, a local half marathon about a month before London. I followed his advice to the letter and was certainly going slow and getting slower. I should point out at this time that I'm not exactly built for running, being 16 stone and playing American football, just so you get okay. the picture. Now... The next bit I don't quite follow because Mr. T says, after about one hour, 45 minutes and approaching the last few miles. What? That's not bad. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're impressed if that's right. Yeah. Maybe he means three hours, 45. Anyway, he's approaching the last few miles. I could see the final water station ahead. I was flagging fairly badly at this point and shuffled along, grabbing a bottle of water that was offered and taking a big slurp. About 50 yards up ahead, I could see salvation. At first I thought I was dreaming. I blinked and confirmed that my saviour was ahead. Two wonderful, beautiful volunteers from St John's Ambulance were stood at the side of the road, holding out a gloved hand with a big blob of gel in their palm. I remembered Uncle Ron's advice. Got a bit of a sprint on, well, it's fast shuffle really, and with a cheery thanks, scooped up some gel in my fingertips, put it in my mouth and <laughs> swallowed. <laughs> Marathon runners at this moment are just a choke. Maybe I should have given a warning. Anyway. At the time, a far off distant voice in my head said, Blimey, that's a bit unhygienic. But Uncle Ron, as I mentioned, is very wise. He told me about it, so it must be true. As I swallowed, oh no. I instantly regretted my, yes. my decision. It was not nice. In no. fact, it was so horrible, I stopped dead in my tracks, stuck my tongue out, wiped it frantically, went... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> However, me stopping dead suddenly was quite surprising for the lady who was running behind me, who didn't stop and suddenly bounced off me and ended up sprawled on the floor. This caused me to bite my tongue. <laughs> As you have worked out by now, this was not an energy gel at all. It was petroleum jelly, used, as all good runners are aware, to stop bits of you rubbing against other bits to oh, stop well them done. becoming too sore. Yeah. That's why the St John's Ambulance were yes. involved. <laughs> I don't know if any of the listeners have ever swallowed a handful of this. Mm. Lubricant. But with a, <laughs> with a mouthful of Vaseline, fresh blood, and a look of horror on my face, 
a St John's ambulance volunteer crying with laughter, tending to a woman with a bloody knee. I did what any self-respecting idiot would do, and I ran off as fast as I could, which wasn't that fast. Now, I know it seems inconsiderate, but as my stupidity knows no bounds, clearly I wasn't thinking rationally, so it's for this that I seek forgiveness. To the poor lady who ended up falling over after crashing into me, I never knew if she finished the race. I never looked back to find out. To the St John's ambulance folk who gave up their time and had to treat said lady, and to wise Uncle Ron, who, if he ever finds out about this, will have a few choice words to say. <laughs> Not that gel. <laughs> I never told anyone about this incident and went on to successfully run London and several other marathons wow. and half marathons since then. However, I have never taken any gel since. Well, obviously, you have to know what kind of gel goes where. That's the thing. And also energy gels have to be used with caution. So I'm just mentioning that as well. well Always I follow instructions. Yes, I, I think if you it. rub that on your body, that would be fine if you got that wrong. But the other way around is, you know, I yes. mean, the, the, it's a bit like diesel and petrol. <laughs> no, but, um, <laughs> not if you, in the no. fact that they're two different things. <laughs> Completely <laughs> not. But if you put strawberry gel on your on the bits that rub, you'll be fine. Yeah, you smell nice, and well, it will soothe standard it. Standard Friday night. Yeah, but if you, I mean, that, that Vaseline is good for your chest, isn't it? If it's menthol, but not take it into. Anyway, moving on. Do I forgive Mr. T? <laughs> Have I made it worst? Uh, Mr. T, no, I can't, because you ruined somebody else's race. Somebody who's actually trained hard and thought about it and focused themselves and got themselves to the finish line. I wonder, actually, what your finish photo would have looked like, actually. It may have been quite hmm. funny. So you're not forgiven for spoiling another runner's race. That's what you're right. not forgiven uh, for. Brother Matthew. Yes, a long overdue appearance by Petroleum Jelly in the Confessions uh, feature, I think. And, we, and a welcome we, we appearance. We do get some. Yes, I'll bet they don't get on. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not going to forgive because I like Bobby. I, I'm, I'm the very much the same in that when I'm running and somebody stops dead in front of you, have the courtesy. If you were in a car, you'd look in your rear view mirror. So if you're running, you would, you would at least look around before you do your stopping dead with uh, Petroleum Jelly in your mouth. Um, so... I am not going to forgive, amazingly.